Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are talking about the future of combustion engines and you know clocks ticking so hopefully there's a good idea or two in here. No in reality I think you know there's a lot of applications for better or worse that are going to continue to use combustion engines uh, for a good while and so if we can make them better great we should make them better. Also I think it's just kind of interesting to look at future tech. So we're going to be looking at what do we have you know what have we been using for the past hundred years or so and then where could we be? What could exist? This is kind of research that has come about in the past 30 years, some of it much more recent than that. So we're going to look at where could combustion engines be going. So we need to understand what's wrong with what we have. So let's start with our simplest example, a four-stroke gasoline spark ignition engine, SI engine, spark ignition. So with this, you of course have your four strokes intake, you pull in air and fuel, compression, you compress that air and fuel, you have a spark then ignite that air and fuel, that gives you your power stroke, and then you push it all out the exhaust. The good news with these spark ignition gasoline engines, uh, they tend to have good emissions if you're using a catalytic converter uh, and they tend to you know, not cost that much compared to like a diesel engine uh, because they have lower pressures. Now if you get high turbocharge pressures uh, within these spark ignition engines, of course they can get more costly. Um, and the beautiful thing about spark ignition engines is that you directly control when that ignition starts uh, because you control the timing of that spark plug. So you have a a lot of control. That's a good thing. Well, why don't we want to continue to use them? Well, because they're not very efficient. And there's two good reasons why they're not very efficient. So first of all, at part loads, meaning when you're not flooring it, you have this throttle that's mostly closed. And so that acts as a restriction. And so it's causing pumping losses for the engine. The engine's trying to pull in air, but this throttle is preventing it. So it's having to work a lot to get in a little bit of air and it's not making power very efficiently. The other part, uh, the other problem with the efficiency of spark ignition engines is that they have low compression ratios. Meaning when you take all that air and fuel and you squeeze it down, you don't squeeze it down all that much. And the more you squeeze it down, the more efficient you are. And the reason why you can't squeeze it down all that much is because that air and fuel will automatically ignite and you don't want that to happen at the wrong time. You want to control when that happens. So in order to prevent that from happening, knock, which can destroy your engine, use this spark plug and you use lower compression ratios. Uh, unfortunately, that means the engine isn't that efficient. So how do we make an engine more efficient? Well, we need to get rid of that throttle and we need to increase our compression ratio. And so that's exactly what we do with a compression ignition engine, CI. So in this case, you pull in that air, same intake stroke, uh, you don't inject fuel yet, you compress that air, and then when you inject that diesel fuel, it ignites because that air is super hot and compressed that it's being injected into. So it automatically ignites as soon as that fuel starts getting injected in. So you're controlling the timing when combustion starts by controlling when you inject that diesel fuel. Now the good news is, as mentioned, this is a very efficient strategy. Um, you're able to use higher compression ratios because the fuel's not floating around in there, meaning you don't have to worry about knock. It's not going to ignite on its own because there's no fuel there. So you can use high compression ratios. And then also you don't need a throttle with these. Uh, in order to modulate how much power you're making, you're simply modulating how much fuel you're injecting. So you've got a more efficient engine, which of course means less CO2 emissions. They're directly correlated. Uh, that's the good news. But there's still bad news with diesel engines. So they're very good. They're what we use today in a lot of you know applications where you want efficiency, uh, industrial applications. But unfortunately, uh, there are there are some bad news here. So soot, particulate emissions, that's one part of it. And the reason you have these particulate emissions is because you have these rich areas. So wherever there's a rich air fuel ratio, meaning lots of fuel, not enough air, you can have this soot form. And because you don't have a well mixed air and fuel ratio those rich areas where that fuel is being directly sprayed out, that's going to form soot. And then also that hot flame front is going to form nitrogen oxide emissions. So NOx emissions, very bad, not healthy. You do not want to create these. Uh, where you have that flame front, both with spark ignition and with compression ignition, where you have that hot local temperature around that flame front, you're going to have NOx emissions. So that's not good. Okay, so we know how to make an efficient engine, but it still has bad emissions. So how do we fix the emissions part of that problem? And that brings us to low temperature combustion. So these three technologies right here are all considered low temperature combustion. And the whole idea is you don't have these hot localized spots where you have that flame front where you have very high local temperatures and these high 
high local temperatures are what are helping to create nitrogen oxides. So with a diesel engine, you have that flame front. With the spark ignited engine, you of course have that flame front, and that's helping to create nitrogen oxides, which we're trying to eliminate by decreasing the temperatures that we see within the combustion chamber. So one of the earlier developed methods of low temperature combustion is called HCCI, homogeneous charge compression ignition. And so the whole idea with HCCI is you pull in a really well mixed air and fuel. So it's all mixed together, it's a homogeneous charge, uh, so all mixed really well together, then you compress it down and as you squeeze it down it gets hot enough that it all ignites nearly simultaneously. So you basically are having all of that air and fuel ignite at the same time, very efficient to do, you have all of that pressure that then pushes down the piston, get the maximum amount of work at, out of it so it's very efficient. And also, because it's really well mixed, you don't have soot formation. So with this compression ignition with a diesel engine, when you're spraying in that diesel fuel, you have those pockets of really rich areas of fuel, and those rich areas are what help create soot. So by having a good mixture and lower localized temperatures, since it's all combusting together rather than this hot flame that's traveling outward, you don't have that NOx formation and you don't have the soot formation. So efficient and you don't have these bad emissions. Sounds great, right? The challenge is it's very difficult to control when all of that combusts. So the timing of it, you don't have a spark plug to say, hey, start now. You don't have an injector to inject in and say, hey, start now. You're relying on a temperature in order for that to happen. And so you have to really modulate your intake temperature and make sure you have the temperature within the combustion chamber just right so that you have combustion occur at the exact moment you want it to. If it happens too early, then you're forcing pressure against the piston that's moving up. You know, best case, you just lose some efficiency. Worst case, you destroy your engine. And then if it happens too late, if it happens after the piston's already moving down, well, it's not gonna be that efficient. So timing is extremely difficult to control with HCCI, hence you don't really see it being done in production. So that leads us to our next technology, PCCI, premixed charge compression ignition. And so this is a bit of a middle ground between these two right here, compression ignition and HCCI. So whereas uh, direct injection compression ignition injects the fuel to start combustion and homogeneous in charge uh, compression ignition injects that fuel really early so it has plenty of time to mix, this is injecting somewhat in the middle ground uh, between these two. So not super early, not super late. And so the way that it works is you inject some fuel early to start that mixture going, uh, but not as early as you would with HCCI. And then in order to control when combustion occurs, you inject a bit more fuel later, and that richer pocket of fuel, as it compresses, that richer pocket of fuel is what ultimately starts burning first, and then that forces those leaner areas to then burn once that center area that's a bit richer starts burning. So you do have a bit more controlled combustion phases, starting you know more where that richer pocket is by your injector, so you can kind of control the timing with the injector a bit more, and then you have those uh, you know lighter air fuel ratio regions then start to ignite and so the good news is slightly more control um, better timing control versus HCCI. However, it's still not perfect control of that combustion, um, and you still do have hydrocarbon, unburnt fuel, and carbon uh, monoxide emissions, and part of the unburnt fuel problem, I mean, you don't have as much time for that to mix really well, so there will be different pockets uh, that don't end up burning. Also, they tend to have a smaller operational range. So meaning, you know, when you're, when you're flat out, uh, when you're, you've got your gas pedal all the way to the floor, these two engines right here don't really like that. They don't operate really well at high loads. They start to run into knock. Versus these, you know, of course, the spark ignited engine, compression ignition engines, they're happy at any range. They'll work at any range um, consistently. So the downside of these two technologies uh, challenging to control when combustion starts and also challenging to have them operate at high loads well. So is there a solution that allows everything to work out? Well, that leads us to RCCI, Reactivity Controlled Compression Ignition. And so this actually uses two different fuels. One of them is port injected, and this is your low reactivity fuel, meaning it doesn't want to combust from compression. And so that could be something like gasoline. And then you have direct injection of a highly reactive fuel, like diesel fuel, which does want to combust from compression. And so you have that 
port injection, you've got a nice, really well mixed air fuel ratio in there that's fairly lean, and then you compress that, and then you use a diesel injector to inject in fuel you create this rich little pocket um, and that diesel fuel does want to ignite from compression so you start the combustion in that center and then it kind of just travels outward from there the compression that has been created the pressure then ignites the rest of it and it all just kind of burns out from there but it doesn't burn out in the same manner like you have here with this traveling flame front it's kind of just more in these phases where it all just kind of combusts so it's very rapid combustion um, but much more controlled because you're using that reactive fuel the diesel direct injector in order to kind of kick things off and so the good news is here, you finally do have good ignition control. You can control the timing of when this reaction starts to occur. The other good news is you, of course, have the benefits of uh, low nitrogen oxide and low soot emissions. And real world, these engine styles are actually really efficient, much more efficient um, than real world. They've, they've seen you know, testing done where they, they beat actually all of these, uh, but definitely better than a diesel engine alone. And finally, uh, it doesn't have to worry about quite uh, as much of the, the load range changes. So if you're at partial throttle, works great. If you're at full throttle, works great. So it sounds all good, right? Reactivity controlled compression ignition sounds great. There are a couple issues still. You still do have high hydrocarbon, uh, meaning unburnt fuel, and high carbon monoxide emissions. And the big downside, you have to use two fuels. So I think if you think about this from like a public scenario, um, people aren't gonna wanna put two different fuels in their car just for them to work. Also, that's you know complex. Uh, you've got those two systems in the same car, that's gonna cost more. Uh, so I think commercially, you know, there could be ways that this could be implemented um, because if there, there's a way for a business to save money um, because this is so much more efficient, uh, then they're probably willing to do it uh, you know, using the, the two different fuels and you know, professionals are filling it up and that kind of thing. But from a consumer base, uh, you know, just the general public going out to their car and putting in two fuels every time seems like kind of a pain that people wouldn't really be interested in. Now, I was curious what real world testing had been done on these different technologies to see if they're actually viable. And so I found a study from 2018 and a study from 2020 where they took a single cylinder engine and they made it work with all these different uh, operational modes. And in doing so, they could kind of compare them and see how they worked out. And so so there were some interesting things uh, you know, when they used the engine with these different modes. And so using compression ignition, um, not surprised, it had the worst nitrogen oxide emissions. So no surprise there. But one thing that is interesting is that the regular old diesel engine had the best uh, carbon monoxide and the best hydrocarbon emissions. Moving on to HCCI, it was the absolute best for nitrogen oxides and for soot formation, and that's because of that really even mixture and those cooler localized temperatures because of that instant combustion, um, but they weren't that efficient, and that was surprising to see, not actually that efficient. And the reason being is if your timing is just slightly off, you don't get to take advantage of that rapid combustion. So again, if it's a little early, then you're working against yourself. You're putting pressure against that piston that's coming up. And if it's too late, then you know, you're not getting all of the work out of it. So uh, the, the timing, very difficult. Another interesting thing they saw in testing was that these, uh, they tried an engine with a 17.5 compression ratio, and this could only operate at 20% load, 20% of its potential load uh, without knock. So they lowered the compression ratio down to 15 to one, and it could still only operate to 40% of its load before it ran into severe knock. So pretty much useless uh, if you think about it that you would never be able to get full load out of the engine. Uh, then moving on to PCCI, Similar results to HCCI, um, they had that bad efficiency. Again, timing is pretty challenging. And also they could only get 20% load with the 17.5 compression ratio. They were able to get up to 60% load once they switched to 15 to one compression ratio. Uh, again, but not ideal. And then finally, the RCCI engine, that was able to get the best efficiency out of all of them. Um, so cool to see that there actually is you know, a possibility for getting better efficiencies. Uh, and of course, having the, the most efficient engine means producing the least amount of CO2. However, all three of these were bad at producing carbon monoxide and producing uh, hydrocarbons. So, you know, there's a trade-off, even though it seems like a superior technology in a lot of ways, you still have those high carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions.
Now, as far as a production example, the closest thing uh, to these technologies that exist in a production car would probably be Mazda's Skyactiv X engine, which they use SPCCI, which is a bit of a combination between spark ignition and HCCI. I've got videos uh, describing how their engine works if you're curious to learn more about that, as well as uh, diving deeper into some of these topics if you'd like to learn more about them. I've got links in the video description. Uh, and one little fun note, um, an electric car uh, is about twice as efficient as RCCI. So even if you were to have a really, really good uh, RCCI engine, it's about half as efficient uh, as an electric car. So just throwing that, you know, stir the pot a little bit. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.